Now, before I get into this review, let's talk about the news that's dropped thanks to the amazing power of Twitter. It has its uses sometimes, I'll have to admit. Now, the news is of two things. One, the OVA that's coming out for the Blu-ray release that's going to be about Eris and her adventure about slaying goblins. Number two, the movie. There's a possibility of a movie if the franchise itself gets a lot of support by the fans and the consumer. You know, buying the novels, buying figurines, merchandise, accessories. If you don't feel like helping out Funimation or the DVDs, you can if you want to. If you don't, you can just go around and buying the books and other things, like I said before. So, it's a big possibility. The question is, is what is the movie going to be about? It's going to be about Volume 7. It's going to be about uh, probably uh, something in the past. That's a possibility. But a lot of people are hoping it will be Volume 7. And I, too, myself, hope it will be about Volume 7. So everyone can just watch it and stuff. And just hopefully they don't do the Demon Slayer route where they make it into a series again, even after making an awesome movie about it. Don't do that. Now, that being said, now when it comes to the OVA of Eris' thing, like I said before in my past reviews, this is a very important thing that happens. The thing besides perspectives, that's the main part thing of much of a side, there's also this thing where there's this chain reaction to things that happens in the series where you'll see somebody years from now and you won't see them years later on into the future. Or some that you did then will have a chain reaction to sometime later on and so on and so forth. So this meeting in a way will affect a certain character. Eris may be one of the main characters in his OVA, but the perspective will probably be on somebody else. How I've read the novels in the manga. So it'll probably be on that other person who will have a very important part in season two. Now, that being said, let's get into the review. We all thought this would be another episode of Rias and the Gang, but nope. It is everyone's best girl, the goddess herself, Roxy. And she goes back to her hometown. Now, for those who don't know, um, Roxy was part of a... When she left home, she joined a guild, a party, and stuff. And the party members were, I believe, like, what, five, four or five of them? I believe. Yeah, I think it was five of them. And one was her, a dude who wanted to be a hero, the pig who died last season, and the horse, which is um, Necroprocra, which showed up in this episode. And the pig died in that part of the first season. You know, I think it was four people. Yeah, it's four people. And they all split. However, the other members have died. Yep, they have died. So it's just those two and stuff like that. And you see another side of Necroprocra that you didn't see in the last part of the series where he just was just a schemer, a scammer, and, and just a scumbag and no one liked and stuff like that, blackmailing people. But he does that to, you know, I guess to show everyone a hard time of how a veteran can be. That's better to be bamboozled by him than by someone who actually will take your life for it. And you see how he's more encouraging, supportive, of Roxy and stuff like that, seeing how she's matured and everything like that, until he mentions dead end, and she see her just freaking out and stuff like that, you know, just trembling because of dead end. And that's because when she was a kid, her parents would always tell her terrible stories about the super race and how they would just terrorize and kill everyone and everything, and they'll come after her if she's not a good girl. So she was always terrorized by that by her parents, so that fear was nailed into her head. So she was always scared of the separate race, even though she's never met them in person. Now, of course, one thing about Rossi went through is something kind of what Rudy just went through, you know, facing your past with your parents, you know. Rossi's how it runs deeper. It wasn't just this one bad meeting that happened. It was something that accumulated since she was a child to the reason why she left. Now, if you read the novel spinoff, well, not novel spinoff, but manga spinoff, Roxy Gets Serious, it tells you what happened when she was a kid. You see, in her race, as you know, they are able to speak telepathically. And because of that, they never speak. They don't know how to speak. Most of them don't. Or any other kind of language. They just don't know how to speak telepathically. 
And however, Roxy's the only one who can't do it for some reason. She was just born not able to do it. She was an oddball, a black sheep. Because of this, she felt like, you know, distant, alienated, isolated. Like everyone was just being mean to her. But no, you see the children and the, par and the parents around her, they weren't being mean to her. They just didn't understand that she couldn't, you know, do what they do. Because it's never happened before. She was a, a rarity. So because of that, it's understandable. But however, she saw it a different way as a child. As a child, you see things more direct in a way. You know, you don't look between the lines or anything like that. Everything's mostly black and white to you. So she even thought that her parents didn't like her either. She felt like the parents were burdened because of her. And so she ran away. But she didn't run away until age 14. Between that time, she actually met someone who taught her magic and the basics of magic. However, one day, that person just up and left without saying anything. So she trained herself a bit more until 14, then she left the village. She never came back. She usually came back 20 years later. That's right, she hadn't seen them for 20 years. And that's because this, her race lives for a very, very long time. People in the demon continent can live for a long, long, long time. So that's why it's hard for them to breed or even to, you know, to expand. And stuff like that. If they were able to breed even more frequently, it would be disastrous. But anyways, with the parents, she come to see um, an understanding. Once again, perspective matters. The parents, she saw as the parents seen her as a burden. You know, reason why they always look so sad. But it was not that the case. They were just having a hard time trying to adapt to actually speaking to the fluent tongue. And they, but they would do anything for their daughter. So they couldn't read her mind. She didn't know how to express herself fully. So because of that, it was, you know, it's just a giant misunderstanding all around. And because of that, it caused the distance between them where she was like, they don't care about me. They were happy I was gone. But that was never the case. They wish they could have done more. And now she understands that, and now she regrets. After all these years, she, they thought different things. And because of that, uh, it was just divided completely. But now they've able to patch things up. It just took <sighs> over 20 years for it to happen. <laughs> wow. But that's just how, even if you know what race you are, you'll have your stubbornness, you know? That's just how it is. Now, for her to finally understand that Brutius was part of Dead End and that Soberts aren't really bad people and stuff, after, so after all these years of Roxy being fear of them, she learns, like, well, they're not bad people. But she will still be traumatized by them. And you'll see what I mean later episodes, probably next season. You know. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is when she walks in now and she sees an Elena Lays, you know, doing what Elena Lays does. And she just stares at her like, this time she's not freaking out. But the fact that she's not freaking out means she's seen this tons of times already. She's seen this so many times, like, it don't even bother me no more. I'm just irritated looking at it. <laughs> like, now. The thing of Alina Lays is I really like to talk about Alina Lays because she's actually one of the most interesting characters in all of Michelle Tansa. The ones that are current right now. She is one of the most interesting and the most mysterious. And theories are actually put around her. So I'm very interested about that. Um, I can't wait to see more about it. But yes, um, don't want to get any more spoilers there because I feel like doing it. I won't. I just want to end the video for y'all's safety. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon. This has been the Macron on Manime. Signing out.